Today we came to Auschwitz, and if you're watching this video, you probably already know a little bit about what happened here. To be honest, until the end, we were not sure that we want to make the video about place or not, but it's a part of history that cannot be forgotten or repeated. When we think about Auschwitz and Birkenau concentration camps, we tend to think about the worst humankind are capable of. But we also want to bring some light to the heroes who sacrificed themselves in order to do the best in the worst possible conditions. These people try to shine a light on what's going on here and bring hope to those who need it the most. First prisoners came to Auschwitz in 1940. Each was given a number that was often tattooed onto their arms and clothes labeled with a triangular symbol. Political prisoners wore red, criminals green, homosexuals pink, and Jews were two triangles in the form of David's star. There was a lot of propaganda going on at the time. As Jews were forced out of their homes, some heard that they were going to war camps, and others were told that they were just being relocated to the east, and that three travel bags were permitted for each person. Without realizing what was happening, a lot of people took their most valued belongings, in some cases, even wedding dresses that they would never get to see again. Most people had no idea what was prepared for them. Upon arrival, those who were not killed were placed into camps. Their lifespan highly depended on job. It was very important to work under the roof to have any chance of survival. There was 1.3 million people sent to Auschwitz. Among those, a quarter of a million were children. Which brings us to the first person we want to shine the light on. Jane Haining was a Scottish woman who worked at a boarding school for Jewish and Christian girls in Budapest. She was advised to return to Britain, but she refused to abandon the Jewish girls in her care. She sheltered the Jewish children for more than four years before she was arrested and eventually taken to Auschwitz-Birkenau with the kids. She stood by the girls in her care in good times and bad. The other person that we would love to mention is Stanislava Lishinska. She was a prisoner in Auschwitz. As she had the medical education, she became a midwife here. She was forced to write the fake reports about the diseases of the newborns in order to take them from their parents and kill. The other midwives, they followed the order, and only Stanislava Lishinska, she refused to drown the kids. After 1943, Nazis sent the newborns with blue eyes outside the camp in order to be Germanized. And this woman, she did the secret tattoos to every kid. She knew that she could be killed for this, but she truly believed that one day these kids will be reunited with their parents. She stayed at the camp until it was liberated, and during the whole stay she delivered over 3,000 kids. She is an official candidate for organization by the Catholic Church. There are many ways people were punished here. This is called the Death Wall, where several thousand people were shot, mostly Polish political prisoners. After some prisoners escaped, public hangings also took place here to terrorize people. Roll calls sometimes lasted for more than 15 hours, while the prisoners had to stand here in the freezing conditions. There was a time a prisoner escaped, and 10 men were picked at random to suffer death by starvation, punishment in an underground bunker. One of the selected let out a cry for his family, and a holy priest, Maximilian Colbet, volunteered to die in his place. After three weeks of unimaginable horror and dehydration and starvation, this holy man was still alive, so the SS men killed him with an injection of carbon acid. By 1941, Nazis came up with a more efficient way to kill people. They started using Zykon B in a gas chamber where more than 700 victims could be killed at once. But that was not enough. The mass kill murder happened here. The final solution to the Jewish question was Birkenau. The trains bolted from the outside and overcrowded kept coming from all over Europe. In summer, it was hot and humid and no airflow. The conditions were horrible. There were no toilets or food, and the trains from Greece would take nine days. A lot of people died during transportation. Others were exhausted.
government expected 800,000 Hungarian Jews to be sent here, so two train tracks were built, so that one train could come and another leave at the same time to make it more efficient. Here in Birkenau there's two sides, and on one side you have the brick barracks, and on this side you have the wooden ones. The wooden ones were for the men, and the other side was for the women and the children. Here in these wooden ones there was about 400 uh, prisoners held in each one of them and originally there were for a uh, horse so it was a horse table for about 50 to 51 horses um, and as a as a visitor you can go inside and some of these uh, a lot of them are actually destroyed but some of them are open and you can see the living conditions as well as the bathrooms that they had to use The living conditions in Birkenau were terrible. Not only 700 people had to stay in one bear, it was often filled with bugs and rats. Insects were a huge problem, and the bottom row was the worst place to sleep because in the rainy seasons the floor would flood like a swamp. So this one is the quarter for the men. We saw the one for the kids, and the men ones are a little worse. And it's all made of wood. So hard to breathe here. Yeah, and you see that they didn't, a lot of times they didn't even have blankets, they just sleep on the wood like this. Sometimes they have some stuff, but a lot of times they just sleep like this on the bed. So it said that the prisoners were fed three times a day, but the, their meals were kind of not really, I would say, meals at all, because for breakfast they would get just some herbal tea, very light, mostly water. Uh, for lunch they would get a little bit of soup. A lot of times it was soup with mold because their potatoes went bad or some other vegetables. And for dinner they would get more, uh, more tea, herbal tea, with a little piece of bread. And a lot of times they kept the bread, or they were supposed to keep the bread for until breakfast, but they couldn't because they were starving, they would just eat all of it. And this food that they were eating, they would give them a lot of stomach problems and diarrhea. And the bathroom is right here behind me. And as you can see, the holes are very near each other, so there's no privacy at all here. And I think one of the worst parts is that they had limited time and they could only use the bathroom twice a, a day. Once in the morning before uh, they went to work and once after they went to work. And a lot of times people would go to the bathroom and they would run across, go back in line and try to go again because they automatically wanted to go to the bathroom once more. And the guards would catch them and oftentimes they'd beat them up or sometimes even kill them. Can you imagine that somebody volunteered to be a prisoner here in Auschwitz? Poland's chief rabbi described this person in a quote, When God created a human, they all said they should be like Witold Pileski. Witold Pileski was a Polish cavalry officer who volunteered to be captured by the Nazis in order to infiltrate the Auschwitz concentration camp. Here in Auschwitz, he managed to gather over a hundred people uh, to be part of the resistance movement uh, in hopes that when the Liberation Army comes in, they would help them from the inside to rescue all the prisoners. In 1943 he escaped um, and when, after he escaped he decided to write what was happening here in Auschwitz and after he wrote that he sent it to Warsaw to the leaders and they would actually denied his uh, offer to come and rescue the people here. In 1945 he compiled a full report that was over 100 pages long, however that report was not published until 2000 and in English in 2012. His life actually ended very tragically. In, he later on in his life he joined an anti-communist group and in 1947 he was captured, tortured and executed in 1948. One more person we wanted to recognize is Oskar Schindler. He was a German that joined the Nazi party for business reasons. Before the war he was known as a drinker, a womanizer, as well as a guy to make quick money. However, during the war all of this changed. He started to make personal relationships with his workers who were Jewish and in 1944 when the Nazis ordered him to ship all of his workers to the concentration camps, he refused to do that and he made a list of over a thousand Jewish men, women and children that he claimed are his workers. Schindler used his money and resources to send his workers to different locations and when 500 women were sent to Auschwitz, he did the impossible. He rescued them by offering fortune and bribes for the Nazi soldiers. Jews that were selected for immediate death, they were heading this way to the cash chambers.